One out of every three flood emergencies Canada results from the development of river ice jams during the spring breakup period. The town of Fort McMurray, Alberta was the scene of the most recent ice jam flood which took place in April 2020. Canada's Radarsat Constellation mission imaged the event and one of its images was used to generate the river ice condition map that is shown behind me. The red tones mark the location of an ice jam which was over 25 kilometers long. This jam led to extensive flooding because it blocked the flow of both the Athabasca River and the Clearwater River. A more detailed discussion regarding the information contained in this type of map will follow shortly. The 2020 Fort McMurray Ice Jam Flood is estimated to have cost over 500 million Canadian dollars in insured damages to homes and commercial properties. The total financial loss is probably twice as much because it includes uninsured damages and indirect costs such as productivity losses, evacuation expenses and investment in better flood control works. Without a doubt, better information about the ice conditions and breaking rivers facilitates the management of ice jam flood emergencies and thus helps to safeguard residents from these catastrophic events. So let's go and find out what information radar remote sensing can offer. We have arrived in Fort McMurray on the 5th of April. At this time, the region has experienced about two weeks of thawing weather, which explains the considerable extent of the water class in this map. Of course, we have time-lapse photographs available to assess the mapping accuracy, but before checking those out, I would like to explain the overall layout of our river ice breakup maps. As you can see in the legend, the maps do not simply indicate the presence of water and ice, but may show up to six ice cover types with different surface roughness levels that group into two main types, namely sheet ice and rubble ice. Sheet ice is relatively smooth, while rubble ice is relatively rough. For emergency management purposes, it is most important to have up-to-date information about the extent and location of rubble ice because its presence increases the risk of ice jam flooding. Okay, let's go back to exploring the details of the map of April 5th. We were about to check if the time-lapse photographs corroborate the mapping results. Our cameras were located just upstream and downstream of Fort McMurray. Let's begin by zooming in on the upstream section of the Athabasca River. The white lines mark the field of view of camera one. Its photograph reveals bare sheet ice which agrees with the green tones that are showing in the map. According to this map, the area viewed by camera two should include some water. So, let's have a look at the matching photograph. Although it is hard to see what exactly is going on in the background, there is certainly no evidence of open water in the nearshore area. Actually, it is highly unlikely that open water developed anywhere in the river this early in the breakup season. Instead, this map displays meltwater and possibly wet snow cover. Wet snow is easily misclassified as water because its backscatter is very similar. In other words, the inability of radar waves to penetrate water complicates the interpretation of this map. You may recall that we encountered the same limitation in the lake ice breakup case study. Fortunately, its impact proved to be short-lived and could be mitigated through the interpretation of subsequent maps. This is also the case for river ice breakup mapping. So let's move on to the next map, which will show the ice conditions three days later. The map for April 8th reveals the presence of rubble ice throughout the Athabasca River, as well as the outflow of the Clearwater River. 
This definitely suggests an increased risk of flooding for the city of Fort McMurray. The available photographs confirm the accuracy of the map and illustrate the extreme surface roughness of rubble ice. By the way, river ice experts refer to surface roughness as texture. Because the map is static, we cannot really tell whether the displayed rubble ice mass is fixed in place or moving downstream. Or, in other words, is an ice jam or an ice run. The distinction is important because an ice jam represents a much higher flood risk than an ice run. To make this distinction with absolute certainty, an additional source of information that can be used to infer the presence or absence of motion is needed. A second map derived from a later radar image is among the available options and an obvious choice provided an appropriate acquisition plan has been put in place. Other potential sources of information include water level measurements, webcam images or video, optical earth observation data, and visual observations either from the ground or from the air. Our next map does not reveal significant changes in the rubble ice that is located downstream of Fort McMurray. The fact that this ice has remained in place for at least four days tells us that it represents an ice jam. Fortunately, this jam did not cause widespread flooding in developed areas. In combination, the maps for April 8 and April 12 clearly demonstrate the importance of monitoring. The photograph from camera 2 confirms the accuracy of the top half of this map. On the other hand, this map exposes dramatic change in the ice cover conditions upstream of Fort McMurray. In fact, it indicates that the breakup of this river reach is nearly complete because the extent of water is greater than the extent of ice. Besides, the water can be seen to concentrate in the main river channel. The available photograph supports our interpretation since it shows open water in the middle of the river and rubble ice leftovers that are grounded on its banks and point bars. Our final map corresponds to the 22nd of April and shows that both the Athabasca River and the Clearwater River are free of ice. The available photographs also reveal open water and thus validate this mapping result. In this case study, we have successfully tracked the 2015 breakup process of the Athabasca River at Fort McMurray. We have uncovered that the utility of radar satellites for river ice breakup monitoring largely derives from their unique sensitivity to surface roughness. We have also learned that mapping issues relating to meltwater, wet snow and ice jams can be mitigated by means of information obtained from successive radar images or sources that are more conventional. But the best proof of the value of radar remote sensing for river ice breakup monitoring is the fact that the application has become operational. Within Canada, the number of stakeholders that makes use of radar-based river ice condition maps is definitely growing. Earlier in this lesson, we saw that frost and thaw govern the information content of radar images that show ice-covered lakes and rivers. So far, the case studies have involved ice observed under thawing conditions. This is about to change as we move on to the next case study, which will demonstrate the excellent utility of radar remote sensing in support of ice road trafficability mapping.